Hello, my name is Jonathan Hicks. I'm Steve Rain. No, I'm Mark Windle. And we are on Tabletopia, uh, reviewing or previewing a game that's currently on Kickstarter. Now, it's not going to be on Kickstarter for very long. Um, so if you are interested and this video has just come out, then rush over there and have a look. Um, this is Arkwright, the card game. If I zoom out a bit here, uh, you have a large kind of player board in the middle for tracking um, demand and supply for various types of goods. Essentially, in this game, you run four different types of factories. You can see you can produce like food or bread, clothing, cutlery, silverware, and lamps, it seems. And each player is going to have a large section where they have factories. So uh, this was actually Steve's, I think, but this is Steve's bread factory. You can see he's producing bread here. He also had a lamp factory and a clothing factory. And so you're going to be running these factories, trying to produce um, goods and selling them to make as much money as possible. Now, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the game, and then we're going to let you know what we thought uh, since we've been playing this, as you can see here, on Tabletopia. Uh, it's freely available to play on to Tabletopia while the Kickstarter's live. Don't know if that will be continued afterwards, but probably have a look and see. Um, so one important thing here, then, is you have this the shares. Yeah, this cube here represents how many shares you have in your own company. And then this is the price of the shares. And as you go through the game, you're trying to increase the price of your shares, essentially... Each round that you sell enough goods of a certain type, it increases your company's share value. And then you want to buy more of your shares to increase the number of shares you have. And at the end of the game, you multiply how many shares you have in your company by the value of those shares in the company. And whoever has the highest total value wins. So you're just about increasing your share value. Now, on your turn, you start off by trying to improve your factories in some way. And there's a number of different improvements you can add. Um, as we go through the game, uh, you can buy more factories. You can see Steve never actually got a cutlery factory here, but you can sort of add a new factory. Uh, you can get workers. You can see this is like a worker card. And you slip these worker cards in the side. Now, it's a little bit awkward to do this on Tabletopia. In theory, this should sit... Oh, if I grab it, there we go. They're supposed to go underneath. You're supposed to sort of slide them underneath. So this adds an extra worker and a machine, and this will make one extra clothing. As you go through the game, one action you can do is upgrade your factories, in which case this flips over, and now you see this produces three clothing. This sort of tells you what it will upgrade to later. So you can produce a certain number of clothes. You see we've got one, two, three, four, five now Steve's factory will be producing. But you've got to pay your workers. So um, when you produce your goods... You're paying to run the factory, which is this 11 cost here, and then each worker has a certain cost. Um, as you go through the game, it's quite nice. The wages of the workers increases. So at the moment, the cost for everybody's workers is four coins, because it's in this section here. Um, but as people get more workers, it increases the price of workers, if you like, it increases their wages. So you've got to pay them more. Uh, the machines are quite cheap to run. They only cost one for each machine. So uh, you're, this is sort of showing you how many people or machines are working and how many goods you're going to produce. So yeah, you can add workers. You can also tell everybody, if I grab Steve's, where's your megaphone card? Here we go. You can increase kind of demand, this megaphone thing here. Again, you're sort of supposed to slide it underneath. Uh, but this increases the appeal of your goods, your marketing, effectively. Um, and then on the track up here, you set your appeal by moving your cube to the appropriate appeal level up here. So let's say Steve gets to four. This represents how many people, if you like, want to buy his goods. Kind of. I'll come back to that. Um, other things you can do. This is like a list of upgrades. Uh, so factories, workers. You can convert workers to machines. So you can see some of these uh, cards here. In fact, this one before it was rotated. This one will come with two workers, but this guy can later be upgraded to a machine. If you take that action, you flip the card around, and now he becomes a machine. And they're obviously cheaper to run, so that's good for you as the factory manager, at least. Um, other actions you can take is you can do the all-important buy shares action. So you, this is where you just spend your money. Money is tracked on the board whoop, over here, and you can spend some of your money in order to buy more shares in your company. So as you go through the game, you're going to need to spend one of your precious upgrade actions, because you can do one of these each round, buying shares in your company, you are going to need to do that. So then you actually get to produce, and I'll show you how the factory produces. You have this sort of slider here, which varies the price, you see the four, five, six, seven is the price of it, but also the appeal at the bottom, the three, two, one, zero. So the more expensive it becomes, the less appealing it is for people to buy it. Uh, you also have this card here that you can spin round. 
So you can either make it very appealing, or if we spin it round, you can increase the price by four, which means it sells for a lot more money. So you might decide on some combination, maybe you decide to put this here. So in this case, your total price would be four, plus the four from the card here, and your appeal would be three, because you haven't gone for any appeal here. So your appeal gets set over here. So yeah, this would be if it was, in fact, this was actually clothing, wasn't it? We better do the right one. So clothing is here. As you increase your price, it also increases this marker here. And effectively, the higher this goes, the more you increase your prices, the less people want to buy things. So this is a, an indication of the public's demand. So this is how appealing your good is. This is the demand. And the difference between the two is how many you get to sell. So in this case, if Steve's was on three, and public demand was down here, you subtract this number at the bottom. So three minus one means he can sell two, in this case, clothing batches, if you like. And his factory produces, oh, a whopping five. So <laughs> he's got a lot of surplus production here. Um, you then multiply the number that you've been able to sell. In this case, Steve could only sell two by the price. Remember, it was four here, plus four is eight. So two eights, he'd get 16. But to run this factory costs 11. Each of these workers, one, two, three, costs four at the moment, so that's another 12. And the machines cost one each, so that's another one, two, three, four. And you've got to pay them all, even if you're not selling the goods. So um, Steve would be end up spending way more money running the factory than actually money he gets from selling the goods. And that's something you've got to be very careful of in the game. It's very easy to end up spending more running your factory than actually getting selling the goods. And it's all about paying attention to these supply and demand tracks. Now, effectively, each round of the game, everyone sort of tries to produce one kind of good. So this token starts here, and we all make bread and try and sell it. Then it goes to here, we all do clothes, then cutlery, then lamps. And then the game moves on to the next decade. So we do that is the first 10 years of the game, then it resets, and we do it all again for the second 10 years. You do that over three decades, and then that's the end of the game. Uh, there's a few other things going on, obviously. Um, this is based, I should say, on the original Arkwright, which is a heavy... Heavy Euro, an awful lot going on. And the idea is this is like a streamlined version of that. I should say, just a couple of other things I'll mention. Uh, you can take loans as you go through the game if you run out of money, uh, but loans are going to decrease the number of shares you've got. You can see at the top here, this minus one, minus two, minus three, reduces the number of shares you get at the end of the game. So effectively you're selling off your shares to try and get money. You also have this nice upgrade thing here. After you've done all these actions and decided what value you're going to produce your goods at, you then get to do an upgrade action. Um, this one here lets you buy shares for che uh, like cheaper. You get to buy one or two half price. That's quite nice. Uh, there's some upgrade cards you can get here. This increases the number of upgrade cards you can get. And there's a nice selection. Uh, you can see Steve has got a couple here. This reduces the cost of your workers for one particular factory. This means you can sell more goods of that type. So in fact, Steve could sell an extra clothing. You know, he he produced, he could only sell two, but he produced five. This card would actually let him sell another one. So that's quite nice. There's a bunch of upgrade cards there. This lets you have more of those. Um, this is a way of permanently increasing the appeal, or the attractiveness of your goods, uh, or indeed the price. It's the quality, effectively. This is where you um, it increases how many. Um, of these extra cards. Remember I said I stuck the megaphone card under here. It says how many of those you can attach to your factories. This lets you increase the number of machines you can, like workers you can convert to machines each round. And then if you're not able to sell the goods for some reason, or maybe you don't, um, like Steve had a bunch of extra clothing left over, you can ship them. And this lets you increase the number of goods you can fit on your ship. So you sort of flip the ship over to say one of your ships has sailed and it takes this many goods off to uh, the new world, I guess and you get to sell it for much more. You can see the price of Steve's here was four plus four, eight, but there's a fixed shipping price. In this case, it'd be 11, so Steve will get 11 per good that he shipped, and you can ship them even if they won't buy them at home in the British market. So uh, the disadvantage to uh, shipping, though, is every time you ship, you add another token on here, and this increases the final price of your shares at the end of the game. So again, you're losing out kind of long-term, short-term game, a long time loss. You've got to balance the two things. A lot of different things to balance, and obviously you're paying attention to what everyone else is doing, but more or less, that is Arkwright, the card game. What do we think? Me first? Uh, is Steve first, yeah. All right. Um, so we played Arkwright, so the teach and this is long. And it's long having played a game with a very similar theme and a very similar... In fact, I think it's the same four resources or pretty much the same four resources. Yeah. 
and it's a long teach. So uh, that might put some people off already. In terms of the game, um, uh, you know, as a, as a game itself, it's a mathsy number crunchy stock market game. It deals with stocks pretty well, probably not as thematically well as Arkwright. I think um, you can never get rid of the workers you've got or whatever. Or um, when you replace the workers in Arkwright and they went back to the job market, that decreased the demand because they weren't working and they weren't want, willing to buy your goods. Whereas in this case, not so much there. Making your goods better increases the demand, but for some reason it then... So making making your goods more appealing reduces how many people want. So I think yeah, if you kind make of. the goods more appealing, the the black markers go up the tracks. Yeah, so I think the idea then... is the more that you're potentially selling, the more you saturate the market, which is why yeah, this but it's demand not goes because down. what makes what makes the the your cubes go up is the quality uh, that you're. Yeah. Uh, the quality you're making for. So I'm not making any more goods. In fact, I, to make my quality better, I'm making the goods cheaper. So for some reason, you'd think that would make it more. You'd, you'd sell more of them. That's not the case. Uh, by making them cheaper, the quality, the quality, or the appeal, polish, not the quality, the appeal is better. So by making the appeal better, the demand seems to reduce, weirdly, but you're making the appeal better to increase the gap between the demand. Anyway, so so I think the original Arkwright is much more thematic. So if you compare, if you've played Arkwright and you want to compare it to this, if you think Arkwright, if you like the game but you think it's far too long and whatever, and this this gets a very similar sort of feel out of it. I think the turns are very much head down to your own thing. But the nice thing is at the end of every one of your turns, if you've got a factory of the goods that are doing that round, you're involved. You're like, well, I'm going first. Okay, uh, how do I do it in such a way that I don't lose money? And then if you're going last, how do I do it in such a way that not only do I not lose money, but I kind of do it the least, you know, the most efficient way to do everyone else in or what stuff like that. So um, there's a lot of interaction on every turn that you have a factory that someone else has a factory of at the same time. Um, otherwise, it's just, yeah, heads down, I'll, I'll do my own thing. My actions are quite long, actually. So sometimes you can be waiting there, but because... There's a lot to think about if you're the sort of person you can think of on the people's turns. Uh, it flew it flew quite well. I think in terms of length of the game, it is shorter than Arkwright. Oh. In terms of calling it Arkwright the card game, in my opinion, that is slightly misleading. If you go into this thinking it's like, you know, a roll for the Galaxy the Dice game, or, you, know, you know, whatever, which is a much, much quicker game than its parent, and it's a much more simple game. This is not much more simple. It is quicker, but it is not as simple. Mark? Yeah, I think I'm going to echo Steve. It's when when you normally say the card game, you're thinking of a slimline version of, of the original. I suppose the original's pretty mega, so this had that had plenty of room for slimlining on this. Uh, it is it is stri it is streamlined compared to Arkwright, but I mean it's still heavier than fifty percent, seventy five percent of the games most people play. It, there's a lot going on. There is. It, yeah, I, mean, I think it does capture the ultimate feeling of Arkwright pretty well, as in which is the balance between um, quality and price, and uh, like uh, quality, price, and advertisement, and balancing all those factors together to try and make the most on your turn while still selling more or selling as many as you need to do, and doing other people in by selling the most, so you get you get the best increase on share prices. So it, it does ultimately capture that. I think it goes, Steve. I. I'm not sure the market bit really captures economics greatly. It's all right. And it's a nice game, and I get where they're trying to go, and they needed to make it simpler than Arkwright, purely because that had a 1,000 cubes that were represented individual workers, which is a problem. But, it, uh, yeah, I'm not sure this quite captures what you're trying to do. I, that's the, well, Again, what Steve said, I like the idea as people go out of work, they can't afford to buy stuff, therefore demand goes down. That doesn't really exist in this as such. Uh, past that, the upgrade system is quite nice. Every turn, every yeah, every turn you said you get to move an upgrade along. It's it's for free, but it means that people do different things. I'm not sure. Ultimately, unless there's a lot more cards, uh, like the special cards, etc. I'm not sure how much variation you're gonna get game to game. I guess a lot of this is can be quite reactive, and I think that's maybe why it's weak a bit. So sometimes I was. If I was last in turn order, I knew I could do outdo all the people if I was competing they're good. But then it got quite AP prone of, well, I've, I, I, it's going to cost me this much and I can make this much. How do I balance that? So it can be a, a bit of a time of people waiting around. 
but ultimately because it does catch the theme and it probably takes i guess if you know what you're doing half the length of time to do the teacher's probably half the two-thirds of arc right so it is it's definitely cuts down that and it does yeah it, it gives you the feeling enough that if you don't want to spend four hours playing arc right you but you do want something in that ball like like that area it does do it yeah i um <sighs> I think you need to have played Arkwright really to be able to compare. But yeah. Arkwright is such a beast of a game. It really is. And if you like Arkwright, you're going to like this. It feels similar enough to Arkwright. But as I say, it is it is shorter, a bit more streamlined. And I appreciate the effort they've made there. Um, theme makes a, a big difference to me. And the original Arkwright was very thematic. This, as I said, doesn't feel quite so thematic in terms of how these things move. It's harder to sort of understand why this is going up or down. But at the same time, the theme in art quite, is quite dry. You're just sort of running a business. And it's not even a particularly exciting business. You're making cutlery or something. <laughs> but it, it does it really well. But just I find it difficult to really engage myself with this theme just because the theme itself is so dry. But if you like the original, then I don't think that's going to bother you. Yep, and you're just getting more of the same. The the way they've done the factories in terms of like the workers and rotating the cars to indicate whether they've been converted to machines is nice and slick. That works well. Flipping them over, you can upgrade the workers to kind of a better side once you move to the next decade. That works really well. Making the decision between do I want a higher appeal this round or rotating it for the increased value. There's some really nice decisions you're making all the way through on your factories in terms of how you upgrade them and how you price your good. And as they've both said, comparing it with other people each round to work out um, how best you know to price your goods effectively. One key element here is that whoever is the top for each round that you sell gets to increase their shares by one extra point compared with everyone else. And that can be a big deal. So you're often competing to try and get the highest appeal, even if maybe you're gonna lose a bit of money when you sell the goods. So that's really interesting. I like the um, the various different ways in which you can upgrade in terms of your board. Do you wanna make sure you're really good at making machines? Do you wanna be really good at buying shares? Because ultimately shares is the thing that wins you the games. Lots of interesting decisions all the way through. So yeah, I think it's a very nice package, very solid. If you like Arkwright, there's plenty to love here. And it's nice that it's a bit shorter. All right. Well, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.